And, oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Totally forgot to say, hey, let's record. So we're talking about herbs. <laughs> Um, we have the aroma, we have the micronutrients. Um, one of the issues that we currently have, uh, per se, in the United States where I live in Oregon, is that we have, you know, a, an issue, sort of like an epidemic that we're eating too much processed foods, but we're not eating enough micronutrients. So we're starting to see some of those deficiencies, which, yes, could be taken care of through supplementation. But what wonderful it is that Mother Earth just gave us everything that we needed through herbs, right? Of course, their medicine, their garnish, and their life. And they're all the things that I'm pretty sure popped into your mind. So thank you so much for participating. So let's start with some of the basics of um of herbalism, and I'm going to tell you my story. Um, how I got interested into herbalism is because I truly believe that food is medicine. And I hope that for our next agroecology class, we can do some sort of like nutrition and wellness. Um, because, you know, beyond, I think it's kind of like intuitive that eating natural, organic from the earth is good for you. But what it really, really impresses me, and this is my story with my cup of tea, is that the very first medicine that I got was chamomile tea or manzanilla, how I know it in Spanish, because I grew up in Mexico City. Um, it was the first time that I remember having a tummy cake and the very first time that I remember my mom making me a warm cup of tea. And I remember just loving the scent just loving how nice it felt as I was drinking it. And then just, you know, a couple minutes later, my tummy cake was gone because it was just so soothing. So in that moment, you know, I was very intrigued by how wonderful the this medicines that, and Calumny looks really pretty. They're like these cute, you know, uh, yellow, Pum pum flowers that <laughs> you just like want to squeeze and like run through the prairie with them. So I just think it's so wonderful that instead of being given a pill, I was given some medicine, some herbs, and that really started my story with herbalism. And, you know, I hope that as we share, we're going to have some sharing time later on, that my story maybe inspires some of your stories to share. But let's start with some of the basics and also always feel free to stop me at any point if you have any questions. So here are the basics of herbalism and I hope that I don't sound like, you know, oh my goodness, you sound like a hippie. I just hope it resonates with you. Um, I believe in energy. I believe that all animals, plants, things have an essence. Um, so practically, you know, how you get to know your herbs is according to their energy. So when you're sleepy, you may need some herbs that are energetic. And when you want rest, you want some herbs that will help you relax. One way in which we can also think about our energetics is that when you're sick, you may either have a fever or you may have some chills right? So when you have a fever, you want to use some cooling agents that when you have the chills, you want some warming agents. So that is like the very basics. And that's how humanity started testing some of the early on herbalisms, that what you want to do is to bring some balance to your body. And some people hear me out. This little plant right here, what is it? Who can recognize this friend? <laughs> this uh, mint. mint. Yes, it is mint. And is mint cooling or is it warm? Mint is cooling. Mm -hmm. Cooling as the yeah. because when you have fever, the mint gets low down your uh, temperature easily. Yes. Definitely. One of the first, one of the nice herbs that you can use to fight a fever is going to be mint because it has that cooling energy, even when you just chew it, right? Uh, we make gum out of mint. So, um, so definitely, you know, it has that um, 
the little one. Okay, I have two different herbs right here. Who wants to give it a go? What are they? Cinnamon and mint. Cinnamon and what's that star? It's in it name star oh. something. <laughs> Somebody's drinking the tea actually. Which one is this? Oh yes. <laughs> it's yes, a that's what it is. Um Yes, we have cinnamon and anise. And if you ever had something with cinnamon, is it refreshing or is it warm? Is it warm? It's warm, warm. Yeah. I love cinnamon tea. I drink yes. it every morning. It's one of my favorites. I love cinnamon. <laughs> but the so fun delicious. fact about yeah, the fun fact about cinnamon tea is that you can also enjoy it as an iced tea. You can just brew it like the night before and it's also very refreshing you know mm, when it comes to you, try you, know, that. you think of um pumpkin spice you know we're in that time now <laughs> you think of those like little agents that bring um some worth some worth um, pumpkin, uh, pumpkin latte like pumpkin yes latte. the pumpkin spice latte right and one of the mm -hmm. spices in pumpkin spice it's cinnamon so definitely these are some warming agents that um, that we want to do. So some of the different ways in which we can use herbs. And once again, this class is meant to be an introduction. Um, I'm going to give you some resources so you can later on explore. I will say just like gardening, just like growing food, herbalism, it's a journey. You have to experiment. You have to try. You have to do some research. So the many use of herbs, of course, we can use them in cooking. We can do an infusion, which is the word for tea. Um, and also we can do some tinctures, some topical medicine, and some concoctions or deconcoctions. Um, so oh, we also, as we know, uh, the syrups, right? And I'm just going to give you some of the basics and introduce some of the herbs that I have prepared for you. So first, let's talk with infusions. So infusions can happen two ways, believe it or not. It can be hot, which can be done in minutes, our good old cup of tea with a little string. <laughs> but it can also be done at room temperature through the process of hours, right? Now what we we call infused waters. Um, something that is really important, uh, what I learned through my herbalism journey, is that you can also do something that is called sun or moon tea. And it's very simple, just how it calls. It depends at what time of the day are you brewing your tea. And it depends on different energies. If you're trying to do something that brings warmth, Maybe you want to do a sun infusion or something that tries to bring you cooling and soothing. You may want to do some moon tea, for example, right here, some chamomile that you put overnight so you can drink, you know, the following night. And something important for you to know that in herbalism, when you have an infusion is when you have mostly water. So that's what we call an infusion. One example that I have here, and it's also one of my favorite teas, is going to be rose tea. Uh, roses are herbs. I um, really love um, our friend who said, like, you can use so many different parts of an herb, right? As long as he has the aroma, those micronutrients, and that nutrition. And just so you know, you're going to have a copy of all the slides, you know, that has all my links and all my information. What I really want you to take into consideration is how important it is to realize that things as simple as roses could also be used. They can be used as instant infusions, meaning you're taking a bath or you're submerging your feet or your hands in water, just bringing those roses and the very awesome essential oils that they have. They're excellent for hydration and they're excellent for antioxidants. And antioxidants is actually what helps our body to fight disease like cancer, um, inflammation, type two diabetes. So as long as we're putting good things into our body, we're starting to see some good results. 
And here comes the big question about herbalism, to dry or not to dry? <laughs> In reality, there's not much of like the neutral differences between the two of them. It's really just practicality, right? Why would you think that you will dry some herbs? What are the first things that come to your mind? To preserve them, to save them. And it depends on what you're making. If you're making sure. soap, soap with them, you don't want to put fresh herbs in there. You you do want to put dry because you don't want to get a mold formation there. You don't want to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's mostly for preservation, right? When you dry your herbs, you take out the moisture of it um, because moisture can bring mold or the growth of other microorganisms. But here we have the same plant, basil, right? Fresh basil and dried basil can both be used for cooking. But also um, how you mentioned uh, very well is that, you know, it's not the same for soap, right? It's going to be different. So if you're planning to preserve your herbs for a longer period of time, it is, it is recommended that you dry them. They do not lose much of their properties, um, they just lose water. <laughs> That's why they call it dehydration. And then, you know, when they are, um, when they're not dry, of course, you know, you run that risk that they might rot, right? Because of the hydration in them. So that was really good, thank you. And here I have some of the health benefits of, of basil, believe it or not, base grade is that um, uh, basil, it can aid in digestion. Also, it has this antioxidants and it boosts our immune system. So throwing some ba basil into your daily cooking or some infusion is one of the best things that you can do. I love to throw some fresh basil leaves into lemonade. It's the best combination. Ooh. Yes. Yum. Um, of course, I have this guide for you. I'm not going to go through all of it um, just for the interest of time. But in here, you can see some of like the wonderful um, uses of herbs into your kitchen. And also, um, one of the journeys that I had as a gardener is that sometimes I feel like my garden wouldn't produce for a lot of people. But if I knew that I was able to enhance their nutrition through herbs, that hit the spot so well. Because once again, they have micronutrients and they have, um, they have you know, nutrients that help enhance our nutrition. Sorry, I was like repeating myself. That was a deja vu. Also something that I wanted to share with y'all um, that comes from my culture. And I also have the link here so you can do a little bit more diving on your own. It's called calitas. Um, this is usually just called as herbs in Mexico. And we tend to just use them in soups. You can literally like stir fry them and put them in a quesadilla. They are so versatile. Um, so the reason why I wanted to highlight calitas is because in the other slide, uh, most of the herbs usually come from, you know, European countries. But actually here we do have a very, you know, robust, um, you know, sources of, of calitas or indigenous herbs that are edible and they're filled with phytochemicals. So if you ever want to do some really nice marketing for your garden or for your farm, say, we grow phytochemicals, aka herbs. <laughs> Those are the agents that like really help bring that nutrition into your, um, into your diet. And like I said, you have, you have a link that has many different recipes and how to, uh, how to explore more. The other way in which you can use herbs is through tinctures. Sorry, for, sometimes I have uh, issues pronouncing that word. Um, but practically what it is, is that here you're doing a long-term strong infusion. And what I mean strong is because your solvent, your agent is going to be alcohol and vinegar. So if this tincture is going to an adult, alcohol is fine, but if it's going to a kiddo, most likely you want to use the vinegar route. Um, tinctures are meant to be consumed in very small doses. 
Um, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I'm not very experienced with them as making them just because I never had the need to have such high doses of an herb. But I know that it can be very useful for people, for example, who suffer from pain. And yes, I had to bring the ganja to the conversation because it's still an herb. <laughs> yeah. Whatever are your, uh, your views on it, that's okay. I'm treating it just as a product of Mother Earth, right? That we have to make the difference between the TLC, which is a component that gets you high, and the CBD, which is actually the essential oil that is actually treating pain in a way in how you can get all the benefits of um, of cannabis without, let's say, like smoking it so much, it can be to a tincture. But also as well in this slide, I do give you a recipe of a tincture for herbal digestion, um, just in case that maybe you do suffer for chronic and digestion, or maybe you have some issues going on, um, this will be a good recipe for it. But, you know, just in case, so you know, information is also in here. The next one that we're uh, that I, I would like to introduce you to, because of course we don't have all the time in the world, is the deconcoction. Um, this is when you are boiling for hours until you get a concentrate, and this is the preferred method for woody or hot or hard roots, right? Woody, just like cinnamon, hard roots like ginger. Right. If you really want to extract the medicine from those components, you really want to get a lot of water and you really want to boil it down. You know, like the water will be reduced to just a quarter of what you started with. Um, and you usually let's say you start with a liter, you're going to end up with just a cup because, you know, most of the boiling is what was getting the extraction from it. As well in here, I'm giving you a recipe for a long health syrup. If you want to make a syrup, you just add some sugar into it um, or maple syrup, um, just because usually the product of a concoction is going to be really strong. So the syrup just makes sure that it's more, you know, we can swallow it. <laughs> but if you have the stomach for it, you know, I'm not gonna stop you. Um, some of the examples that I have in here is, for example, ginger. Ginger is wonderful for digestive health, for improving our heart health, immune system as we're going into the colder season and we want to make sure to be well protected. Having some ginger tea, just grab the root and just boil it and, you know, boil it down. And then you can add some syrup and you don't have to deal with all the chemicals that come with NyQuil right? <laughs> and also something that is really cool and I wanted to share with you is that it is possible to go to the grocery store, grab some ginger, and just keep regrowing it. So that was one of the coolest things for me to learn, um, to know how to actually grow ginger indoors in a container. So I'm just going to be passing this for y'all, um, how cool it's going to, to be able to do that. And the last thing that I wanted to go into our medicine is, of course, our topical medicine. I've been talking a lot about like ingesting the medicine, but we have creams. So creams are meant to retain moisture in the skin. Balms are to soften the skin and, can, and should be applied to wet and damp skin and salts, right, which are very similar to bombs, but actually what they do is that they support healing. And one of the best things that I do and that I have done at home is to do some calendula salt because whenever you have an open wound, which we might get in the garden, we're weeding, we're doing, we're cutting, <laughs> you know, something comes into it, just you can come up with um, a really quick recipe. You can like literally Google it. And calendula is such a great antibacterial, anti-inflammatory. It's medicine from earth. So instead of having to put, you know, any other sort of like topical things, you can just do some coconut oil, some calendula. You can just keep it in your gardening, um, your gardening bag 
And whenever something happens, you can always apply some of it. And that to say that all of those three, the creams, the bombs, and the psalms, they are um, they are things that you can do for money. There are things that, you know, maybe your garden is really small and you don't have the capacity to grow food for a thousand people, but maybe you do have the capacity to come up with a really nice skincare line, right? All thanks to herbalism that you grow yourself. So now that I have given you some examples of the herbs, I just wanted to take a couple minutes to see some of y'all would like to share about your medicine. So add to my information, who would like to share about an herb that is really close to their heart? I like to share. Okay. Now, what, what is it that you want about the herbs, you say? I will... Just why is it so special to you? How is it your medicine? Well, um, last uh, spring, I uh, got some elderberry plants. Okay. And I planted them in the front of my lawn. And uh, I planted them on the front of my lawn. And uh, this year they produced berries for me. And I've taken the berries and I made an elderberry syrup. And I really start taking it and I really see the difference in my um, respiratory. I was coughing a lot and coughing up a lot of mucus. And since I've been taking the elderberry, I take a tablespoon every morning mm -hmm. um, over the last month. It, take, it took about a month or six weeks. I don't have the coughing and I don't have the increased mucus. So yes. that is my testament to uh, the herbs. I'm just in awe of them, very much yes. so. And I love to grow them because I can't afford to buy them, nor do I want to buy them. I'm a seed saver. I love seeds and I love my garden. My garden is the most precious thing to me. So um, a lot of things we buy in the store, we, it grows so well in California. We're so blessed. So uh, yes, I, that is my share of what, how the herbs have recently um, enhanced my life and made me feel better. Thank and you. I'd like to find out more about your, what is that, Eldolites? How do you say that again in Spanish? I'm sorry. Oh, Calites. Calites. I love to learn about that. Because Absolutely. The, the I, want to, I want to grow it. I want to grow it and learn that. Yes, there's so nutrition and some of them are actually considered weeds in the United States when they're not. They they're aren't. not. No, like yeah. you said, everything has its meaning and purpose or else our creator would not have put it here. Exactly. Anyone else wants to share a little bit of their medicine? I want to share. Okay, and then I see you, Em. Okay, go ahead, De Dev. Did I get it right? Yeah. Sorry. It's like lavender. It's lavender. Or you can call me D. Okay, D. Okay, thank you. That's that's short and easy. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to start with my tea. I drink this every morning. So mm -hmm. I grow my own herbs in my backyard. and. Um, like Ms. Ross said, I love to save the seeds. And I also bring seeds from wherever I go. So um, so I I put in the morning, I have fresh ginger, mint, basil, and then cinnamon, cloves, green cardamoms, fennel, and a little bit of uh, uh, celery seed. I'm starting to feel a lot of like energy, right? Dude. Yes. And then, uh, I I I never have phlegm in my in my chest or I generally don't get throat infections. I mean, if I do get it's bad infection, but um it keeps me healthy, it keeps my stomach, you know, comfortable, no no stomach aches. Um I eat I eat vegetables, I don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. So um it's it really keeps my day going. Awesome. Thank and, you so much. Yeah. And then, and then you mentioned that you know your mom made you the tea for stomach ache. So uh the if if your stomach is hurting or you know it's some kind of indigestion. So you just boil the celery seed 
You okay. can add brown sugar, or if you don't have brown sugar, you can use honey and a little bit of ginger and a few uh, the the black pepper, either coarsely ground or you can just throw the peppercorn and mm -hmm. just boil it and drink it. I love it. Thank you so and, much for sharing that. Yeah, so and celery seed. fresh mint. Yeah, fresh. You can add fresh mint to it, and I also pickle uh, the lemons with a sugar and um, the black rocks salt mm -hmm. and celery seed, and it is the I have twenty years old pickle too. And I just keep it in the fridge. And if you need just a small piece of uh, lemon pickle and just drink, you know, about half a glass of warm water and your I stomach is fixed. Yeah. Yes, I love it. I love that we're recording this and then I'm going to show you all how we keep all this knowledge. Thank you for sharing. And I'm writing it. a book uh, right now. On, on You're writing book. a book? Yes. As you should, yes. <laughs> and you know, all the old, uh, you know, my my grandma used to use a lot of herbs. My mom used a lot of herbs. And then my son was sick just recently. He went back today. So mm -hmm. I didn't give him any medication. Now he, you know, he had ear infection, throat infection. So I was, I was uh, doing the fruit for him every day. The same tea that I drink in the morning. And uh, I was cooking the fruit like uh, bananas, apples, pears, peaches in in uh, clarified butter mm -hmm. and then adding rock candy to it because it's the purest form of sugar, crystallized sugar. And adding a few cadmiums, a little bit nutmeg and cloves and cinnamon. And it fixed his throat. All the chest infections. Keep me, keep me posted for that recipe book because right now, yeah, thank goodness we have it on video. Okay, well, how about we just pass the baton to M? Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So good to hear all the different medicines y'all are sharing. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing to learn more. For the longest time, my main go to herb has been oregano. Um, back in high school I want to say I started using oregano my mom introduced it to me like in the tincture form as an immune booster anytime I would start to feel a little bit sick or a sore throat um, I would just take a few drops with water and would feel much better pretty quickly um, in college um, this is just a love letter to oregano I <laughs> had like a, I had my wisdom teeth removed and one side of my one side of my mouth got infected and was super swollen and purple. Um, and everyone was very concerned. was like, you need to take antibiotics. And I was really against it. And so I wanted to try the natural route. And I asked a few of my uh, more experienced herbalist friends. And they all commented that oregano is a really, really great antibiotic. Um, and so I, based off of a few different insights that I received, I started blanching oregano and putting it in my mouth at night before I went to bed while also taking the tincture and within three days it completely cleared up without having to take antibiotics um and then coming to Ecuador I, I live in Ecuador here now and I've had like every time I've had stomach issues it's very common like everyone here knows that the best household rem remedy for a stomach ache is oregano like manzanilla like uh, let's what was it? Celery seed tea also. Oregano is also really great for tummy aches. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, that's yeah. why they say usually like um for like Italian cuisines or pastas or things that are really hearty, they use oregano mm -hmm. because it's actually going to help. It's going to aid the digestion or such a heavy meal. So whenever you, know, you try to eat something that is really heavy on your stomach, you know, adding this amazing herbs really, really aids with digestion. That's really nice. Someone else who would like to share maybe one more medicine. We have a bunch of pharmacy people here. <laughs> It's so good. That's why it's good to start talking about herbalism. 
and it is a journey because I literally just started with manzanilla with chamomile that was it but then I started realizing that I could incorporate anything else so someone else I can share okay um well lately for me I've been connecting with rosemary and I've been drinking a lot of rosemary with eucalyptus and um, hibiscus flowers. And that's kind of been my newest obsession lately. I drink it all day, especially because I work in an office and rosemary mm -hmm. is really good for um, concentration and memory. So I've noticed I'm, it's been a lot better. So I've been drinking it consistently and I've seen an improvement in both levels. So I'm really happy about that. And it's also good for hair growth and your nails. So rosemary yes. is really great and I use it for cooking as well I put it in my chicken and potatoes so I love the fact that I could do almost everything with it so rosemary is like my go-to lately yeah one one little piece of advice that a friend gave me is that you can yeah. you can do a concoction out of rosemary hence start with a lot of water boil it down and once you have the concentrate add it to your shampoo or conditioner mm -hmm. and it's just going to do miracles to your hair you know, okay. if you suffer from like uh, hair loss or, you know, like hair is not doing very well, it's just a way in which, you know, topical medicine that you can enhance um, through rosemary. So thank you so much for sharing. So now I'm coming like to the end um, of um, my presentation. And of course, this is just the beginning of our herbalism journey, right? Um, so something that I did through my through my herbalism training is something that is called materia medica. And I know it sounds like Spanish, but it's actually Latin. <laughs> just Spanish derives from Latin, um, in which it just means your medical material. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of something that I did for my favorite herb, which was manzanilla. So if you want to start your own herbalism, everything that you're sharing with within this group is so important to document because then later on you can pass that knowledge to future generations, right? And that's the beauty of it. So practically, um, Materia Medica, you know, it will include some of the information about the plan, such as, you know, what is its, you know, Latin, like species um, name, where does it come from? Where does it grow? For example, chamomile is actually originally from Europe, Asia, and Africa. Um, it was brought by the product of colonization through the Americas, but it grows very well here. It just took off. Awesome. Um, also, you can, you know, uh, here I have like some more information about manzanilla, its energetics, for example. Its energetic is that it, it gives the body like that, like the damp feeling. Um, when ingested uh, hot, it can just really bring this soothing experience and also it's uh, antimicrobial. And then what you can do through like, because I know one of our friends is writing a book, and so you can start um, looking for more information about its indications, its clinical use. And sort of, you know, how it can be used, you know, like chamomile is really good to regulate your sleep, to aid for digestion, to boost your immunity, to protect your skin. So definitely there is a lot of uh, ways in which you can use it. This website right here, organicfacts.net, is one of my favorite websites to get evidence-based information about the herbs that I'm exploring. So I'm going to drop it in the chat, but you as well are going to have this information for you. So that was just an example, but what I really, really want for all of us to sort of like make the commitments of sort of like, what are we going to be working on is that start our own herb garden. It seems that some of you are already on it, keep going, but let's spread the movement, right? More people need to know that they can grow their own medicine, that you don't need a lot of space because actually you get a high yield from herbs, right? You want to make it into a business. You know, you can grow the herb, you can dry it, you can sell it, you can make beauty products, you can make medicine out of it. But one of the most beautiful things, like I said, please, 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 
document your journey, all the wisdom that maybe has been passed through you, through your ancestors, through your own journey, through what you have done. Let's start a journal and notebook that you can actually document everything. Don't forget that herbs are mighty. <laughs> They're small but mighty, right? They take little space, but they have a high yield. And let's never ever forget that herbs are a part of the ecosystem. They're the ultimate nature medicine, right? Not only we need it, but our animal relatives also need it. So it's really important to keep herbs as part of a healthy garden. Even if you are a steward at a farm, if you are... Um, really just growing avocados or something, learn about what grows in the land where you dwell upon and what could be a good herb, what can be a medicine that you can share with the world because we need it. You know, just like I said, that we have an epidemic of people not eating healthy. We also have an epidemic of people popping way too many pills, which I understand. Some of them were by a doctor, but if we can get some prevention and some understanding um, in how their bodies can be protected through herbalism, I think that's more beautiful. So that was practically the end of my presentation. I always like to end um, all the presentations with some sort of like reflection or maybe something that inspire you to do or something that you were inspired to do from this talk. So I don't know if any of you would like to just share what you're taking from this um, from this conversation, or also if you have any questions. I have a question. That can we can we uh, print uh, all the slides? Can you print on the slides? Yeah. Can, can I print all these slides that you used? Yeah. Like, if you have my permission to use them, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, you can print them and you can so, write on them. <laughs> so, uh, we'll have the access to these or you will send another I link. I send them in an email. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank so you. Just look for your email as a register um, person, come up. And like I said, you have my permission to go and spread the word about herbalism. Explore your own journey through tinctures, through herbs, through cooking you know there's so many ways in which you can do it so thank you for that question are there any other thoughts or reflections that you would like to share you know i i learned today that how beneficial is oregano i didn't oregano? yeah and then you know especially the young lady who talked about the infection in the in the gum uh that's wonderful yeah. thank you for sharing that I will use it more often now. I, I like agree. To, I would like to get the uh, the indigenous herbs. Is there any way I can get the names of that? And where can I get them? Do I have to, uh, can I order them? Or where can Is I get them? Or not, I'm pretty sure they're already growing your backyard. <laughs> well, I want to make sure because there are a lot of, in, you live a lot of things in there so that... Um, you know, yeah, I know, and I want to learn because I want to take my herbs to the indigenous uh, culture, not only uh, the, you know, also my own culture as well. Yes. Uh, so I'm kind of tired of westernized culture. It's, it, we've just been so colonized to a point where I'm exhausted. <laughs> So actually this one right here, Verdolaga, I think it's also known as Persu. Persu oh yeah, I want can that. You, that. Can you send me some of that? Do you have my that is, that is literally a weed. Like people pull out of this wow. out of the driveway. It's an herb. I think I've it's seen it. Herb. I hate yeah. that word weed. It, de it diminishes and-, and uh, Exactly. It I don't like not. that word either. Very I true. don't like it. Take it out of yes. the vocabulary. <laughs> Everything has its purpose. Just because it's not Everything on the market it. to make us eat it and yeah. talk about that, it's, it's it's that's why I want it because it it's it's what the indigenous yeah. people use for millenniums. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. 
Where are you? Uh, are you in California? Who's that, Fernanda? Are you, you talking to me, darling? Yes, I am. <laughs> are you in California? Yes, I am. I'm in California. Where at? I live in Northern California, in the Bay Area. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm in Bay. Southern California. I can I can send you some seeds, you know, from the Himalayan range. So you can you can try growing the herbs. From where? From, where? from the Himalayan range. Oh, that would be what? From Himalayas? Yes. So that'll be around Nepal and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, do they grow well in this in this uh, climate, in this weather? Well, you can try. If I can grow in the Southern California, they will grow maybe. So do they take hot weather or cold weather? Oh, well, just, just try it, you know, like it's trial and error, you know. So I have to, you know, keep moving my plants sometimes under the shade. Sometimes in the sun. So, yeah. So just try and especially in winter, maybe you have to like the mint, you have to grow indoors. And same thing with basil and fennel seeds. Fennel seeds, I think they can grow. Oh, no, out. that grows well here and basil. I have all that in my garden and fennel yeah. seeds. Yeah, I have no problems with that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Definitely a lot of trial and error. Same with herbalism, right? Sometimes a yes. little bit more ginger. <laughs> of so, course, you know, always take some precautions. Follow an initial recipe, um, so that way you know you don't you don't get into it. But yes, the word is quelites, and quelites. yeah, and I know Sarah is in Mexico in Guanajuato, so go to the corner. Find somebody who's making quesadillas and that's actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and actually and you'd be surprised because mm. it's not just one, it's it's very different. So what is the, the plant what are, um vera verdolaga purslane? Um, yeah, verdolaga. Uh-huh. I've been going to this place and on you know the menu it's like eggs with they say greens but it's the purslane and it's so delicious mm, that sounds good yeah and it is so okay. full cool of nutrients what is coletas oh, that, it's a name for herbs this one calitas yeah it's a name for mm. herbs it's okay. now what i like it mm. calitas Mm -hmm. it sounds really fun <laughs> i like it does it grow in southern california yeah they're indigenous yeah this this one i want all those plants yes <laughs> me too get all of them <laughs> yes well the thing is how i look at it california is mexico <laughs> yes <laughs> because it was me mexico too. before uh, it changed so i don't so see they'll adapt you know perfectly. we take these plants they take the land and divide it among mm -mm. People, but the yeah, plants the know the potato, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, uh, this is still all idea. of Mexico, you know, yeah, yeah. this was part of Mexico before mm -hmm. it was colonized. That's right. Yes, and then divided. And it's all the Americas. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. okay, Indigenous so people else? are here. <laughs> anybody else would like to share some last minute reflections? We have one minute or something that you would like to do you love your conversation? I want to know when is the next session. We're ready for the next one, Frida. <laughs> You're ready for the next one. <laughs> yes. So our agroecology happy hours uh, are scheduled for the last Monday of every month. So that's what okay. you want to remember and already mark your calendars. We're working on the next uh, three sessions. Thank you so much for saying that you're interested in it. Um, of course, we always support, you know, any sort of contribution that you can give to the MESA program so we can continue this one. But we, of course, we never turn anyone away. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, every the last Monday of every month. Uh, October will be my friend Danae. She's also another wonderful person. And most likely I will be doing the November one. And that will be very much focused on um, indigenous nutrition. So I'm more than happy to speak about that. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, Frida. My takeaway is just use as much as I can out of every plant. 
and just benefit from all its beauty that it gives us all. So thank you, Frida. Thank you. Well, you have some re recipes for us in, in your nutrition class that we could. Yes, that will be, that will be, the, that will be like uh, the main of it. Um, you know, I'm a nutrition professional. I teach nutrition at the college level. So I'm more than happy, you know, to take all your questions and, and um, yeah, it will be great to, to show some recipes. And like I said, that will be based on like indigenous um, ingredients from North America. Um, so yeah, so I will just leave you with this quote again. Do not forget that everything on earth has a purpose. Every disease, every disease and earth, earth is here. And, and every, every person, person has, has a mission. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Yes. Hi everyone. It was so Bye, nice Frida. to spend the evening with you. Stay connected yeah. and I thank you very excited. much. Bless thank you. And thank you. Thanks. Bye everybody. Good Have a beautiful Good evening. Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>